I am very excited to be here today. So thank you all for coming. So I will be talking about EOF, the Educational Opportunity Fund, or what I like to call my extra outstanding family. Now, let me set the scene for you. Here I am in Trenton and the Capitol, celebrating the 50th year anniversary for EOF. It's a great day. Legislators coming in, saying how great it is that we're an EOF program, the great things that we do. There was one that really resonated with me. Janine LaRue. She walked into the building, walked straight to the front of our room, and started to tell her life story like that was on the agenda. And mind you, she's probably only about this tall, but I swear she was 6'7 when she walked in. She had such a presence to her, like she belonged there. She walks right to the front, starts to talk about her high school days, how she had gotten into her dream university, got a scholarship, had it all worked out. But then she said that she was sexually assaulted by a family friend and became pregnant and lost all of it. She began to talk about how she became suicidal and depressed. But there's one thing she said she owed her life to, and that was the EOF program. And the one thing that she said that really struck me and resonated me, she said, EOF are inspiration. EOF students are inspiration, excuse me. And today, I hope to inspire you. So just a quick background on how EOF emerged. So EOF came after the Newark riots, or how Jihad, one of my EOF peers, says Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> Newark. <laughs> um, it came after the riots in Newark, New Jersey, um, for people fighting for equality and justice. And unfortunately, many people were left injured or dead. But if it didn't happen, then I might not be here in front of you today. My name is Nick Verzicco. I'm the SGA president, also an EOF scholar. I'm a proud member of Monmouth University. I come from Mays Landing, New Jersey, so yes, I am a piney. I'm deep south. <laughs> but throughout my life, I've dealt with a lot of drug abuse in my family, things that haven't been easy for me. But it's made me who I am today. And similar to my EOF peers, they face similar adversity, and that's why they do what they do today. Like Dr. Paul said in his famous last speech, brick walls are there for a reason. They're there to show us how badly we want something. Now, I might not have a, I might not have a thesis to present to you today, but my academic contribution to Monmouth University is to showcase my EOF peers and the great work that they do. And by virtue of these challenges and perspectives that they face, their brick walls are rooted in the work that they do. So my first one is Austin Skelton. You can say hi, Austin, if you want. He's in the back right there. <laughs> Class of 2018, 2018, he's from Woodbridge, New Jersey. His research was done on police misconduct and people of color in various community sizes. And he focused on the positive correlation between police brutality and minorities, something that we hear a lot about in the news today, something that is prevalent, and something that Austin's going to have the chance to go on to explore some more, because he is going to Villanova Law School, along with Keith Lee right there in the front. <laughs> Clap it up for them. Clap it up for them, definitely. My next one is Sarah Bowers, class of 2019. Woo woo, class of 2019. <laughs> um, she comes from Marlton, New Jersey. She's a social work major. And the research that she did was on racial inequality in youth sentencing and looking to the New Jersey prison system. She focused on the mass incarceration rates of minorities, especially black and Latinos, and also did a look into that minority, minority population being the majority of population in juvenile prisons. And again, like Sarah and me, we're still figuring out what we're going to do after Mama, so we'll get back to you on that one. My next one is Richard Felicetti, class of 2018. He's from Old Bridge, New Jersey. He's a psychology major, 
and his research was on race and prejudice, factors influencing adoption decisions, and he focused on the correlation between racial prejudice, prejudice, excuse me, and the adoption decisions of people. And he's actually going to go on to get his PhD at Fairleigh Dickinson University, which is very impressive too. So another EOF scholar putting on. Now, I only touched the surface of what these, these great people have accomplished, my wonderful EOF peers accomplished. There's so much more depth behind what they've done. But there is a commonality. They are all from different places. They all have different majors, but there is one theme to their work. They are finding and researching the things that are directly affecting them and their peers. They are being the ones to make the change, take action against the things that affects the people that they care about. If you're still not convinced about UOF's contribution to Monmouth University, I will show you this next slide. So we could see a breakdown at EOF compared to Monmouth to see how diverse EOF is. EOF is bringing light to issues on campus that our general body may be missing. EOF is more than a program for financially struggling minorities. EOF is a program for leaders, innovators of the future. They're making a change because they have the passion, motivation, grit, and most importantly, the opportunity to do so. These people, when faced with this brick wall of challenges, takes this EOF opportunity sledgehammer and busts right through it. And when they come out on the other side, they are leaders and innovators and in making a change that's not only going to affect Monmouth, not only New Jersey, but the world. <laughs>